Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Before we begin, I would like to notify you that today's program is being recorded and transcribed so that our partners and stakeholders can catch it later if they've missed it. With that being said, keep in mind, because it is being recorded, we'd like to remind you that ever uh, we are ever cautious not to disclose or disclose uh, sensitive DHS information, including law enforcement and personally identifiable uh, information. By staying and participating in this program, you are giving consent to being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please exit the meeting and contact the host. The recording will be made available via the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security YouTube channel in approximately two weeks. With that out of the way, on behalf of CISA Executive Assistant Director Dr. Mussington, we are excited and pleased to welcome you to this program as we announce and kick off the official release of the state, local, tribal, and territorial security assessment at first entry resource to you, our SLTT partners. The SAFE is designed for security practitioners to rapidly evaluate a facility's current security posture and identify security options for infrastructure's owners and operators to mitigate relevant threats. A link to the SAFE fact sheet has been made available in the Q&A pod. Now let's hit the wave tops of today's agenda which you can also find a link to in the Q&A pod. First, we'll have opening remarks by Dr. David Mussington, Dr. Mussington and Mr. Peter Hoffman, followed by several briefs covering the origins of the SAFE tool and programs that support this expanded release and deployment. After those presentations, we'll have time for Q&A and then close with final remarks by Dr. Mussington. We need to go over one general housekeeping rule if you have any comments or questions at any time during this program, please enter them into the Q&A pod feature and we'll make every effort to address them as they come in and at the very least during the Q&A portion of the program, time permitting. Without further ado, let's introduce our first speaker, Dr. David Mussington. Dr. Mussington currently serves as the Executive Assistant Director for Infrastructure Security at the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency as of February 2021. As Executive Assistant Director, he helps lead CISA's efforts to secure the nation's critical infrastructure in coordination with government and the private sector. Key areas of focus include vulnerability and risk assessments, securing soft targets in crowded places, training and exercises, and securing high-risk chemical facilities. Prior to joining CISA, Dr. Mustin was Professor of the Practice and Director for the Center for Public Policy and Private Enterprise at the School of Public Policy for the University of Maryland. His research and teaching activities focused on cyber physical system risk management, election cybersecurity, and critical, critical infrastructure security risk management. In 2010, he was Senior Advisor for Cyber Policy in the U.S. Department of Defense, later serving on the Obama's administration National Security Council staff as Director for Surface Transportation Security Policy. In this former role, he led preparation and release of the 2011 Defense Strategy for Operating in Cyberspace, which was DOD's first enterprise-wide cyber strategy document. Dr. Mussington has a doctorate in political science from Canada's Carrollton University. He also received a Bachelor of Arts and Master's Art degree in Economics and Political Science from the University of Toronto. He undertook postdoctoral work at Harvard's Belfour Center, where he was a MacArthur Scholar and at the UK's International Institute for Strategic Studies. Sir, welcome and over to you. Well, thanks, Sean, and thanks everyone um, for the opportunity to speak to you. The Department of Homeland Security and CISA has a long history of working with federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial partners and stakeholders to improve the security and resilience of the nation's communities and way of life. An important part of this partnership and collaboration has always come from the implementation of security assessment capabilities, such as a security assessment at first entry or SAFE capability. In 2019, CISA created this, the SAFE to be a rapid, high-level security assessment. SAFE's intended audience are facility operated with limited security postures, such as houses of worship, schools, health clinics, and certain election-related locations. SAFE is a first step for facility managers at these locations to develop an effective and robust security program. And CISA's Protective Security Advisors, or PSAs, have conducted SAFE visits at thousands of locations. In 2021, SLTT officials began requesting access to SAFE to partner with CISA in its efforts to improve security and resilience. 
this presented an opportunity for capacity building, something we prioritize. From January to July 2022, Tether conducted a six month SLTT safe limited deployment with SLTT partners sponsored by PSAs. The safe limited deployment in collaboration with representatives from the Iowa Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, New Jersey Homeland Security Office, North Carolina Homeland Security Office, Michigan State Police Emergency Management and Homeland Security Division, and Virginia Beach Office of Emergency Management was very successful and highlighted how effectively CISA and SLTT jurisdictions can work together. After this limited deployment, limited and successful deployment, CISA determined it could expand the SLTT safe for a larger deployment to SLTT partners to support other capacity building efforts to include election efforts. We're excited to announce there will be two safe rollouts in FY24. Today marks the first SLTT self safe rollout. The version CISA is releasing today is an updated version of the SLTT safe that was used during the limited deployment with improvements informed by the positive feedback that we've received. So the plans for the second safe release to occur in the new calendar year, the date still to be determined. This version will be a further expanded version of safe which will coincide with improvements on the CISA gateway. This improved and expanded version will also be available to CISA and sponsored state, local, territorial, and tribal participants. I'm happy to announce we'll be offering structured safe training, structured training on safe, excuse me, as well. This training will ensure SLTT participants have the knowledge and understanding that they need to conduct a safe and deliver the rollout. You'll hear more about this training later in the, in the presentation. Just for the closing comment, I'd say that I've tracked safe type tools developed by DHS and laterally by CISA since I was an official at Amtrak. And I've never been more impressed by how much that past experience has been rolled into newer and more advanced versions. This is the best safe we've had so far. Thanks to you, the partners who engendered a real, real um, engagement in improving the service offerings we have. So thanks everyone. Back to you, Sean. Thank you, Dr. Mustington. And next up, we'll have some remarks by Mr. Peter Hoffman, who is the lead analyst for the Detroit and Southeast Michigan Information and Intelligence Center, also referred to as the DECIMIC. Mr. Hoffman coordinates the DECIMIC's analysts and serves as a point of contact for law enforcement, emergency managers, critical infrastructure operators, and private sector partners to the DECIMIC. Previously, Mr. Hoffman served as a critical infrastructure protection specialist for the Michigan Intelligence and Operations Center, a fusion center analyst in the counterterrorism unit at the Washington Regional Threat Analysis Center, and as the critical infrastructure protection analyst with the DECIMIC. He currently chairs the Critical Infrastructure Working Group and serves on the executive committee for CISA State, Local, Tribal, and Territorial Government Coordinating Council. Mr. Hoffman possesses a master's in intelligence analysis from the University of Detroit Mercy and a BA in political science from Marquette University. Mr. Hoffman, thank you so much for joining us here today and over to you. Thank you very much for having me. State, local, tribal, and territorial governments are vital to protecting critical infrastructure and ensuring the resilience of communities that they serve. Formed in April 2007, the State, Local, Tribal, and Territorial Government Coordinating Council is a national cross-sector council identified in the current version of the National Infrastructure Protection Plan. The council leverages the expertise of its members to bring SLTT government's perspective into national level, level efforts around cybersecurity and critical infrastructure protection. By providing a national representation of SLTT governments, the Council is a valuable forum and resource for CISA across geographic boundaries and all levels of government. The SLTT GCC goals are to be CISA's trusted resource for SLTT government perspective, be a force multiplier for CISA's messages to SLTT governments, and network with professionals in the Homeland Security enterprise to further CISA's mission. With these goals in mind, we are incredibly excited and grateful to be part of version of the rollout of version two of the SLTT SAFE tool. Since 2021, the SLTT GCC has engaged with CISA staff to explore the expansion of the, of the SAFE tool to SLTT governments and users. 
This intentional engagement started to build momentum in 2022 when several SLTT GCC members were selected to participate in the Safe Tool uh, pilot project Dr. Mussington mentioned previously. Our members are volunteers. They are respected professionals in their field who are committed to furthering cybersecurity and critical infrastructure protection in order to defend today and secure tomorrow. The SLTT GCC looks forward to continuing to be actively engaged with CISA and its regional staff in supporting the continued evolution of the SAFE tool. CISA's willingness to leverage the SLTT GCC and the organizations we represent as a resource to provide the, that SLTT government perspective as a part of the SAFE tool enhancement is not minimized or taken for granted. We appreciate the invitation to be here and thank you for your time today. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. And we are most appreciative of your support and partnership. Now we're going to turn it over to Mr. Stephen Kaufman, who is the chief for our resilient services branch. Steve will provide a brief history of the SAFE's development from the limited deployment phase to where we are now with the expanded release to SLTT. Steve, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Sean. Good afternoon, everyone. If we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, as you've already heard, uh, the security assessment at first entry is a capability that was designed to assess current security posture and identify options for consideration, produce a report in under two hours at facilities that do not have uh, you know, normal or, or uh, robust security postures. So our intended audiences were facilities with uh, such as houses of worship, schools, health clinics, in certain election facilities. The assessments are really built around physical security and are focused on planning. We try to use understandable standard language for vulnerabilities and options to uh, improve security. And since 2019, the safes have been conducted by our protective security advisors. So as, as you've heard already this afternoon, uh, in 2021, responding to interest from uh, state, local, tribal, and territorial officials and from the SLTT GCC, um, we began looking into expanding the use of the SAFE tool uh, to our SLTT partners. What that led us to um, after we uh, formulating uh, some of the questions in the SLTT, or I'm sorry, in the uh, SAFE tool to make it um, more broadly applicable, we instituted uh, a six month limited deployment and we conducted that with CISA sponsored partners in five uh, states or in local uh, jurisdictions. Uh, you've heard them mentioned, but I'll repeat them here. Uh, the Iowa Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, the New Jersey Homeland Security Office, the North Carolina Homeland Security Office, the Michigan State Police and Emergency Management and Homeland Security Division, and the Virginia Beach Office of Emergency Management. This six month limited deployment gave us an opportunity to test the SAFE uh, in these uh, use cases to make any revisions that we uh, determined were necessary uh, based on uh, the uh, experience during these uh, limited deployment uh, efforts. And that resulted in um, the document or the, the capability that we're releasing today. So with that, uh, I believe the next slide is going to Mr. Bill Box, and I will turn it over to him. All right, thanks, uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, next up um, to address PCI aspects of the safe release uh, is the PCI program branch chief, Mr. Phil Box. Phil, over to you. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Phil Boggs. I am the PCII or Protected Critical Infrastructure Information Program Manager in the Infrastructure Security Division. Uh, quickly, just wanted to state, uh, many of you out there are already PCI authorized users that uh, the, the, the SAFE SLTT will be eligible for PCI protection. So for those who don't know, PCI program started back in 2004, enables, uh, people to share information between owners and operators, both private and SLTT, of uh, information on security of critical physical and cyber uh, information. 
So when you share this information with the federal government or you submit it and it's validated, it has certain protections under law. So we say these are legal protections. Uh, obviously, you see them there. The four uh, key is it can't be disclosed under FOIA. Uh, also, every state has its own uh, type of disclosure laws. Uh, it protects it from being disclosed by those. Uh, PCI cannot be used in a civil action, so think of civil court actions, and it can't be used for regulatory purposes. So four critical protections of information that, that is shared. When you as a state assessor uh, go through this, uh, if you want to offer, remember these are voluntary. If, if the owner operator chooses to uh, uh, invoke PCI protections, you must get a signed express and certification statement. Uh, or this SLTT assessor, uh, we, we have a, a, a electronic system called PSIMS where you can electronically submit or upload the SAFE uh, along with the ENC statement uh, as a sponsor, meaning the SLTT assessor can, can uh, submit it, or the owner operator can submit the SAFE via electronic submissions portal themselves. So, uh, and when, when the owner operator does it themselves, they, the ENC is actually included in the electronic uh, uh, submission process. So, uh, just to let a few things known, so we've already protected, uh, just the program itself since 2004 has protected over 140,000 submissions. And since the SAFE has been started uh, with the Federals, uh, we have actually protected over 1,000 of the, uh, the SAFEs uh, for PCI protections. So very common, very used by the uh, by the regions and the PSAs. We have a great relationship uh, with them. So if you have any issues with uh, submissions or anything, the PCI program office is uh, here to help. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, Greg Bird to talk about the CISA Gateway. Thanks, Phil. And now we'll transition over to Dr. Greg Bird, who is the Mission Systems Branch Chief, and will be providing an overview of the CISA Gateway. Over to you, Greg. All right. Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you hail from. So the uh, SLTT uh, Safe Version 2 is currently available for download directly in, in the CISA Gateway. Uh, once you complete the uh, nomination process for the users, they will end up logging on to the CISA Gateway, go to our survey and assessments uh, tool set everything which is approximately in the middle of the upper tabs. Well, once you're in there, if you have both analyst and assessor roles within the system, you will need to switch over to the uh, assessor role. Once in there, you can scroll down to our survey and assessment templates section, and at the very bottom, you will see the link for the SAFE SLTT. For those that had access during the limited deployment, it is the exact same link. We have updated it with the most recent version. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Sean. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. And for our last brief before Q&A, uh, we have Mr. Reggie Baker, who is the Program Training uh, Branch Chief, and will cover details concerning safe training events and other pertinent pertinent training related information. Reggie, over to you. Thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. The program training branch has developed a safe SLTT training course designed to be an interactive tool for participants to engage with the instructors while walking through the tool utilizing their own devices. Class sizes are limited to 50 participants to allow for questions during the training. We have identified four initial training dates, which are October the 26th, October the 31st, November the 2nd, and November the 16th. Once the participants have been selected, the program training branch will send out, uh, send them the training links for their attendance. Additional training sessions will be provided as required. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Reggie. And now this brings us to the Q&A portion of the program. We'll turn it over to Mr. Jason Goodwin, our assessment chief, to run us through Q&A. Uh, over to you, Jason. All right, thank you, Sean, and thank you, everybody. So as uh, Sean said, I'll be leading Q&A. Uh, just as a reminder, please use the Q&A pod to submit any questions you may have. Please include your name and your organization. And it uh, seems like we've got quite a bit of time, but if we uh, run out of time or if there aren't any other questions, 
but they come in later, we will uh, keep track of those and provide them to everyone. So the first question that we received in advance, I believe is gonna be related to PCII. So that'll be for Phil. And the question is, are SLTT required to first register and conduct PCI authorized training and obtain CISA gateway counts before having access to the SLTT safe? Uh, yes, they will, uh, but not directly. Uh, remember when the, when the safe uh, is submitted by an SLTT assessor or a private owner operator, it's validated. Uh, that safe is placed uh, unless it is a requested for limited distribution, which is rare. But uh, if not, it goes into the a shared folder, which then is viewed through the CISA Gateway Digital Library. Now, I don't know if uh, for Greg and those if they will associate the safe with the map function, and uh, that might be a little bit different. Uh, but I do know that that's the way you will have to view it. Over. Thank you, sir. The next question we have, which I believe might also be for you. Must all safes conducted by SLTT assessors be protected by the PCII program? Uh, no. Safe uh, or PCI is an uh, is only uh, a voluntary program. So when I say is they're eligible for PCI protections, but the owner operator has to choose that. Uh, I do remind people, though, that anything stored in a federal IT system could be eligible for disclosure uh, under our records management capability uh, to the public. So if we get FOIA, as we say, for certain documents, uh, they could be eligible to be released. Hence why we uh, and the PSAs push um, uh, push the PCI program, uh, and they're, they're our biggest users, obviously, along with the cybersecurity advisors, uh, to actually protect them. Over. Excellent. Thank you for that clarification, sir. All right. Our next question, I believe, uh, is a reference to the second release of SAFE that Dr. Mutsington mentioned at his opening remarks. Uh, we have heard mention of SAFE 3.0. How will SAFE 3.0 be different from SLTT SAFE version 2? the version that is being released today. Uh, and Greg, that's probably for you. Excuse me, Dr. Bird. Thank you, Jason. So yes, so where the SAFE uh, SLTT version two is a standalone where you download it, you run everything from your local computer, SAFE 3.0 for uh, all participants is actually integrated directly into the CISA gateway via our survey and uh, assessments tool. And that will, instead of having unstructured type data when you upload the reports as you do today, you will actually have structured data that will allow you to track, query, and review the overall SAFE. Thank you. Um, and a related question to that, when will SAFE 3.0 be released? And to clarify, SLTT will have access to it as well. I think that's back to you, Greg. Yes. So yes, so the uh, SAFE 3.0 is still in development. We are currently targeting to release it in the, the new calendar year for 2024. Everything, the specific date and time is yet to be announced, but we will continue to uh, message that to all of our customers and stakeholders when that time comes. PSAs will have access to SAFE 3.0 initially. This will be primarily to help test, troubleshoot as needed, and then SLTT will gain access at a later time to be determined. Thank you. Ah, okay. And uh, Mr. Greg, one more question for you. I think this is also related. Should SLTT transition from safe SLTT safe version two to safe 3.0 when it is eventually available?
Yes, yeah, so the the CISA uh, PSAs, they will transition to SAFE 3.0 as their default SAFE capability once it becomes available. Uh, and we do, as CISA, encourage all of our SLTT partners that have access to SAFE version 2 uh, for SLTT to also transition to that for the usage uh, as it will include the updated and expanded capabilities. Thank you, sir. OK, uh, I think those answers the questions I initially had, so um, I'm not able to see the chat. But if someone on the team could relay any additional questions from that, I'm happy to direct to the appropriate person. OK, we have a question I do see now. Is there a training slide deck for SLTT partners for regions to engage with SLTT partners and PSAs to conduct an on-site safe walkthrough, i.e. trainings for safe assessments? Um, I believe that is incorporated in the training, but uh, Reggie, I'll defer to you on that one. Thank you. That is uh, incorporated into the training. Um, all all the uh, interactions for uh, the the regions will be addressed during the training times. Um, so I think that answers the question. It all is all incorporated inside the training, sir. Thank you, sir. Good question. Another question with just 50 per training date, will there be additional training based on sign up demand? Uh, I'll answer that one. Yes, there will be additional trainings provided to ensure that anyone that exceeds the current 50 uh, HAP limit will also have opportunities. Um, and that'll be determined by a PTB brain training branch with new sessions potentially available in December and beyond. Any other questions in the chat? OK, not seeing any. Um, so Sean, back to you. Thanks, Jason. So this brings us to the uh, portion where we're going to have uh, closing remarks by Dr. Mussington. Dr. Mussington, over to you. Uh, thanks, Sean. Just a few closing uh, thoughts. Um, CISA works with a wide range of partners, government, industry, international, and other, to defend against an evolving range of threats spanning cybersecurity, infrastructure security, and emergency communications, but also scanning and planning for future threats to collaboration with our partners. I share with you today the value of SAFE. This resource is only a fraction of what CISA has to offer. I encourage you to reach out to us at CISA.gov to learn more. Thanks again for the opportunity to speak with you today. By providing safe to us LTT partners, I believe we have taken an important step in bolstering our work together to improve the security and resilience of community facilities and of our way of life. Thanks again for listening. Thank you, Dr. Mussington. And this now brings us to the end of this program. Again, on behalf of us here at CISA, we truly thank each and every one of you for your time and equally important your partnership in expanding the use of the safe resource. You are free to drop and please take care.